Hello everyone, my name's Dave. I took many physics and mechanics courses while studying engineering at university that inspired me to do this project. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple bridge building game 100% from scratch using C++ and SDL2. Well, that bridge doesn't look very safe, does it? It collapsed under its own weight because the stresses in some of the beams were too high, so they broke. Let's try a different design. I'm going to add two new beams. Ah, that looks much better. I don't know about you, but I still wouldn't want to use that bridge though. As you can see, some of the beams, the dark red ones, have quite a lot of stress in them, and they look like they're almost ready to break. But overall, it's holding this time. As I mentioned earlier, I took many physics and mechanics courses while studying engineering at university. The one that stands out the most was called Finite Element Analysis, or FEA for short. The overall idea is to split the big complicating bridge up into smaller pieces. In FEA, the beams are often called elements, and the connections between them are often called nodes. However, for simplicity, I'll call the beams beams and the nodes pins. We can model each beam as a simple spring, where the force that the spring exerts equals a constant value multiplied by its displacement. The spring constant is just a constant number that will represent how stiff the beams are, and the displacement is just the beam's length at any time minus its starting length. Since the position of the pins is always known, it means that the displacements are also always known, and therefore the forces are always known as well. This is the key idea behind finite element analysis that makes analyzing our big complicating bridge so simple. Without it, we'd pretty much have to write out lots of different equations and use complicated math and mechanics to solve it. In addition to the force in each beam, we're going to also need to add the force of gravity. It will be equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration of gravity, where the mass is just a number that represents how much material the beam is made of. So a beam that's twice as long will have twice the mass. The acceleration of gravity is simply just a constant number that will represent how quickly everything in our game world accelerates. To keep the simulation simple, we'll look at it from the perspective of the pins. Since there are two pins connected to each beam, each one will be responsible for half the beam's force of gravity and half the beam's mass. However, it's important to note that the force of the beam itself will be the full force, not half, because the beam exerts an equal and opposite force on each of the pins. The actual code that implements this is pretty straightforward. There's a loop that loops through all the beams in the game. For each beam, a function is called that checks to see if the pin connects to the beam or not. If it does, then the force and mass it exerts on the pin are added to it. The forces from the beam are calculated with the following code. First, the displacement is calculated and used to calculate the force in the beam. Then, the force of gravity is calculated. The force in the beam is then used to set the color it will be drawn at. The closer the force is to the maximum allowable force, the more red it will be drawn, and the lower the force, the less red it will be drawn. If the force is high enough, then the beam's is broken flag is set to true. Finally, the sum of the force in the beam and half the force of gravity is output. Note that the direction of the force is dependent on the pin that called the function, and if needed, it's flipped to ensure that it points in the right direction. Now that we know the total force and mass acting on each of the pins, we can use the equation for Newton's second law, F equals ma, to calculate the acceleration at any point in time. This is simply done by rearranging it to acceleration equals force sum over mass sum. Since the forces and masses have already been calculated, the actual code for the movement is pretty straightforward. After the acceleration of the pin is calculated, the velocity and position are also calculated. 
One thing that I'll also note is that the actual forces calculated using this method may not be 100% realistic. It's important to remember that game physics occur in a virtual world that we create, unlike real physics that occur in the real world. This means that game physics need to look realistic, but it's helpful to make simplifications so that the code is simple enough to write and to ensure that it runs in real time. Next, I decided to get the basic graphics set up. To keep it simple, I started by making the background a solid purple color. I decided to make the nodes green squares and the beams green lines. When the game is run, you can see the bridge move and the stresses within the beams. By playing around with the stiffness of the beams, you can see that they look anywhere from really springy, where they move around a lot, to very strong and stiff. You can play around with the different values yourself until the bridge looks as stiff or flexible as you want. The last step was to improve the graphics. I decided on a very simple 2D art style because it's not only really quick and simple to draw, but I felt that it worked really well for the 2D bridge game theme. I decided to keep the background simple by drawing the clouds, land, and water all into one image. Then I created a separate image for the beam and a separate image for the pin. I then loaded all the images into the game and modified the code slightly to draw each of them. As you can see, the graphics look way nicer. All the source code is available on my website. Link is in the description. I've also got a bunch of other games, code, and tutorials on my channel and website, so be sure to check those out if you're interested. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.